So, okay. So just wanted to start like uh, last time, I think we were, okay, where did that window go now? So hold on, hold on, hold on. Ta -da, ta -da. Our mind. Okay, so, so far we have been looking at everything from um, um, HPC perspective, but by now you would have realized HPC is a huge pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. uh, so, which today my goal is to introduce you to Cybers. Uh, Jake, do you already have a Cybers account? Yes. Yeah, okay. I've been using AI Verde for sort of, um, for some la language model stuff, yeah. Okay, cool. So how are you, like, are you accessing AI so, like this, like uh, from chat.cybers? Um, I'm mostly doing it via the API, the API in Python. So I'm running code in VS Code and using the API key to access um, a language model on Cybers. But that right. makes sense. But do you run anything on Cybers at all, or are you running everything from your laptop? Um, I, I think I'm run everything I'm doing so far. I'm running from my laptop. Okay, perfect. So that's why I wanted to introduce you to Cybers, um, because Cybers is exactly like HPC, but I want to call it ten times better and ten times um, in um, more powerful also. So have you ever gone to de.cybers.org? Um, can you just log in there, like de.cybers? de.cybers.org? Yeah, or you can just go to cybers.org also. Uh, don't think I have. Okay, so that's okay. But what I'm going to do today is mostly try to run everything from cybers, so which you will find is much more like a walk in the park or cakewalk kind of thing when compared to uh, this. Uh, have you, like if you, uh, Nirav, if he already has AI Verde access, does he need to apply for Cybers access separately? He, he, he does because AI Verde is only using the U of A authentication. Um, so he will have to go to user.cybers.org to get it. So uh, you, you, yeah, he, he can just fill it out and it'll take like a few seconds to do it. Yeah, um, Jake, can can you apply while we do? So once you apply, Nirav can immediately approve you there. I, I will approve the GPU access for him, the device access for him. Um, it says email already assigned to an account. Ah, huh. so you already have an account then. Sounds if like you've forgotten, yeah, if so, you can just click. So I'll just try logging in. Yeah, why don't you see the screen then we can help you guide, guide okay. through that. Yeah, I, I'm, I have an account, I'm logged in. Perfect, can okay. you? What? Yeah, just share your screen. So I see, um, I'll have you apply for, um, uh, like the higher order access. So I can see what your, once you apply, I can then approve you, so. Um, you want me to share my screen right now? Yeah, yeah. if that's easier, yeah, just uh, you're uh, logged in in the DE. I just gave you access, can you try again? Okay, got it. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. Yep. So then we would just go to the DE, right? The there. discovery environment, just uh, if you scroll down in the main page, my services under my, my services. There it is. Yeah, he's right there. There, there. Just Launch. Click launch. And just click login and you're good. On the right hand side, you'll see login. There it is. All right, you're in. Okay, great. Um, okay, so why does it not like you? Oh, there it is. 
Okay. And your brand new, so it'll make you take a tour, but you can just say dismiss. Okay. And do me a favor, click on the top right corner where it says H, like you know, for. And you have, yeah, you are a pro. So you have the higher order, you have up to like, I think two or three terabytes of space and all the fanciness that Arizona.edu people have. Okay. Um, uh, and then if you uh, click back on uh, where it says apps, one more down, you're on data, click on apps. And you can click on, uh, I, I know, uh, Mithun, what you were going to teach with. But, uh, I mean, I was gonna use my own gpu access but how can he apply for gpu like right now so so he had to apply for why so so take how about you click on uh, uh jupiter lab data science click on it and then you can just hit next 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 actually i should have asked you to launch vs code but that's okay click launch analysis Oh, he already has access. So now if you scroll up a little bit up here, yeah, it says go to analysis. You're now going to go into a Jupyter notebook that's being set up for you and you have your own. There it is. It's all yours and your data and side versus on the left-hand side. And yeah, so, so uh, Mithun, he has access to everything. Uh, go back to where it says analysis, Jake on the left hand i mean uh back to the discovery environment the other old tab not the jupiter lab the other tab there it is um go back to all the apps like the uh, one a uh, little bit higher there we go and uh, on the search bar on the top where you see the magnifying glass just type gpu There you are. So he does have access to Rocker's R Studio and Ubuntu desktop and GPU. For some reason, he doesn't have access to the um, Jupyter Lab GPU. But I, I we, we'll figure that out. But um, you, but yeah, you you can run GPU things so right now. If you click on uh, Ubuntu desktop GPU and just go to review and launch. Okay, this is, yeah, next, 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 and you're good. And launch analysis. Yeah, so you're running Ubuntu GPU, and now click on go to analysis. It'll take a few seconds to find a GPU for you, and so now we'll have a full Ubuntu desktop running for you there you are so wow. now you have uh, so if you like click on the uh, lower bottom there's like a terminal that looks like a you know a command line you click on that yep love it yeah so if you type nvidia n uh dash uh no space SMI. SMI. Okay. S yeah. Yep, enter. Yep, you're running on a GPU and it's a if you make the screen a little bit bigger, you'll be able to see it. Yep, you are running on an uh, GPU A sixteen yeah. GPU. There it is. It's your GPU. Oh, I see. Yeah. So it's uh, it's trivially easy to get your own. And uh, the cool part is, um, I don't think Mithun, and sorry, I'm hijacking uh, Mithun's uh, session, but if you go back to analysis, uh, tab again, and where it says more action, you can say uh, share. 
and put in Nirav and IRAV. Select that and um, make it read right. Yeah. Hit done. And now let me see. You tell me you shared something with me. And it hasn't. It'll eventually copy and paste the URL that you have for uh, uh, on your uh, Ubuntu desktop. This one? Like that. Uh, yeah, the ne the the next one, no, the next tab. Uh, yeah, just copy the yeah, copy that URL and put it in chat. Okay. I'm glad Mithun is learning stuff here too. Yeah, I didn't know we had a Ubuntu <laughs> UI. Even J uh, Enrique didn't know. So we uh, we always use it from a voice. We just didn't know we had a Ubuntu. So which is this is a perfect uh, office hours. You know, we are like learning. Everybody, uh, learning everybody. Can you see me type on your command line? Oh yeah! Wow. So you and I now are sharing the same screen. So now if you are helping someone or doing something or collaboratively coding, you can just use this. Wow. And, and I'm logged in as me and you're logged in as you. So this is like a whole nother level of, and I'm sure Enrique and Mithun do not know this exists inside our infrastructure. And this is heavy hypervisor stuff, beautiful. Yes. Anyway, so I will let you guys get back to your regularly scheduled program. Sorry, Mithun. Yeah. But yeah, this I like allows you to do a lot of interesting things so you can wrap up applications and then let people play with it. Okay, yeah. Mithun. And uh, Jake, an important part, when you're done with this, which is in a way you are, uh, you can go back to the analysis. And uh, if you click back on uh, the analysis icon on the left, you see number two, uh, one down, down where it says uh, there are two analysis running, oh. click on that. So you see what's running, it'll tell you how long it's running and typically we give four hours. But if you need more than four hours, you can click on that hourglass next to it. And when you click on it, it'll take it to the maximum possible. So click on that. And it'll take it till, you know, more, more time. So just like in HPC, they kill you. Here, we don't, we will let you do that so that way if you're in the middle of analysis, like I need four more hours or 10 more hours, you get that. So that's the hit extend for quick. So now you, you can see you have 75 hours left. Uh, <laughs> on, uh, 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 and so, but you can now select that and just hit the X on it and it will terminate it. So you can hit X. Yeah. And then same for the other one. So that way you're not either tying up a GPU or wasting time. Yeah. All right. So that was like a quick slide through you for just compute, but you can do a lot of crazy things with your data also over here. And so if you click on the data window, and I think Mithun will co maybe cover some of that. If not, we'll we'll do an office hour on this some other time. No, All right, no. Mithun. Sorry, no, I. No issues. Perfect. This is perfect. So even I'm learning a lot of new things. Um, so the what I was thinking of doing today, if you can go back to my screen, is um, I wanted to just go back to um, Cyverse and like try like you are you said you're already accessing um, AI Verde from command line. How do you do that? Like, do you have a um, can you show me how you do that? Like yes. from, from your VS Code. So. Um... Let 
So it's, I mean, literally just, no, that's not what I want to do. I'm just using, using open AI. Uh, can you share the screen and just, I just want to, okay, you, you have it there. Uh, Okay, perfect. And do you like send out like uh, uh, all the prompts or something? How do you access this? Yeah, so I then, um, right now I'm using pandas and I mean, I can share my screen again if you want, or yeah, I'm just using pandas to get a CSV file into Llama or Meta Llama on the AI Verde and sending prompts and it it is it's a, analyzing the content of the csv and coding it numerically and then sending me back a csv with numeric codes wow okay so you just covered everything i wanted to teach you today the <laughs> only that. so uh i mean yeah it's the same thing so i was just gonna say like uh, i'll probably just run through what i have anyway uh, yeah but you probably you probably know all, all this you know, already. So if you can look at my screen, the way I do it is um, in Cyverse, I got some of these guys to create me a wise the environment with the GPU on it. So we don't you don't have to run a full fledged um, G, uh, Ubuntu system, but this one is a much more lightweight one. Um, I think Nirav or maybe Michaela can create. Um, this is what we call these apps, um, and this way, if I you know if I have this GPU, it's exactly same as you saw earlier, so it doesn't have to launch um, launch an entire Ubuntu desktop. But even here, like you can pick the kind of GPU you want, right? And there, uh, just whatever, click click next, and I just launch the same thing. So this I feel is much more lightweight um, because the idea is you don't need a full fledged Ubuntu. All you need is a uh, Jupyter Lab notebook. So, and the reason is I'm trying to get you to move from laptop to cybers. Uh, so HPC has, sure, it has a lot of heavy artillery, but the problem is HPC is scheduling. Like if once they run out of your quota, they just kick you out. Uh, but like Nirav said, Cybers doesn't have that kind of an issue. And more importantly, um, if you remember earlier, we were doing TMUX because usually once you close the connector connection to the SSH, uh, usually like G, uh, HPC kind of stop all the analysis you are doing. But Cyverse on the other end just stays there as long as if you have extended your timing, um, you can um, keep you know, um, working on Cyverse. So I always found Cyverse to be a very, very useful tool, very intuitive. So you can probably follow on what I'm doing. So what I usually have is I have a folder inside the home. Uh, I go to, uh, I have a folder here. So, and I just say, you know, I want a new Jupyter notebook, Jupyter, Jupyter. Uh, so, okay, so now, now you can do everything you have been doing on your laptop, but from here. So you don't have to worry about like connecting over SSH or HPC and things like that. Say, and also uh, Enrique has done another brilliant stuff, which is, uh, so are you familiar with what LangChain is? Or, okay, are you, from, okay, so let me, feel free to say no, okay, because I can then based on that explain everything. So most I'm, of I'm the- Very sort of, I've, I've watched people using it. I've run some of the code that you've provided. I'm not super familiar with, with, with everything that it does. No, that's okay. That's okay. I'm exactly. So feel free to say all that. Uh, are you familiar with what fine tuning is? Conceptually, yes. Yeah. So the idea is okay. So all this while we have been, let's say, you, you in, even in the code you showed me in the chat window, you were um, calling OpenAI, and it's like a base model which is trained almost everything under the sun. So you can give it stuff, uh, but then eventually sh the way you are doing it is you're uh, sending all your CSVs every single time over a prompt. Now that gets more complicated, right? So which is why there is this whole concept called fine tuning, which simply means 
okay, uh, this AI, you're trained on everything under the sun, but now I want you to focus only on dogs, like how to classify dogs. Like I give a picture of dogs, you classify me the right picture of dogs or something like that. Now, that that is a, it's a good thing, but the problem with that kind of a methodology is you need a huge amount of GPU resources to fine tune this huge model by itself because if you remember, uh, or rather what you pasted on your, on the chat window, that model is sitting and already running on top of a GPU. But instead, if you are as a researcher, you said, no, I have 50,000 research papers. I want my um, LLM to be fine tuned, to focus only on that. Like we don't want the entire world knowledge that it has, but we want it to be focused only on your own research because otherwise it's gonna hallucinate big time. And um, I'm sure you have seen uh, the AI world a friend end, right? Like this, this, this one here, like, have you seen this one? Yeah. yeah. So this is what we have been doing. So we have been, everybody who approaches us, we kind of, let's say HPC, right? So the HPC guys came in and told us, hey, we have a huge HPC documentation. Can you fine tune or create, um, LLM very specifically answering only questions from that and anything outside it, it should say, I don't know, right? So the immediate answer usually is what we call fine tuning, which is take the whole LLM and retrain it on only your data, right? Now, the tricky part about that is it's a gar gargantuan effort in itself because you have like 7 billion parameters, the model is huge. And now you have to rerun the whole model. Um, like you are directly, I know, hold on. Um, I'm getting to the rack part yet. Um, so I'm just saying the, instead of getting to fine tune what, um, so that means you also need access to this huge amount of GPU. So now what people use is what we call rag, uh, retrieval augmented generation. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, Enrique did a thing on it yesterday. Oh, in the other class, right? Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. So RAG is basically what we do is like we have a specific knowledge base here and we kind of index it. And let's say you are a user here asking a question. So you don't have to specifically bring your own data and index it yourself, but you offline, you give us the data here we index it for you over like a vector database. And by the time you ask the question in a front end like AI wording, right? So this is very kind of fine tuned, but I wanna call it specialized only on a particular topic. So in this case, this is your research papers, right? So what I was trying to tell you today, sh show you today is how you can access this from your command line, which probably you're doing already, um, but over cybers so that you can, you don't have to uh, worry about so many things. So one thing, if you already have the window open is Lang, okay, so I'll just quickly mention what Lang chain also is. So Lang chain is literally a chain where it helps you call one system after the other. Let me see if I have a decent picture of that. Uh, so it's, there's so many of these things which goes inside like prompt en engineering and a lot of sub components which goes into this whole RAG pipeline and Langchain kind of just abstracts it out and gives you a much nicer, a chain of things. It's a chain of ecosystems. And that is what kind of sits behind this here um, and that is uh, this picture here, uh, where did that go, our AI, um, RAG AI. So here, this picture here, everything that happens on the right-hand side of this picture is delivered by Langchain. So what uh, Enrique has done here is he has put a wrapper on top of RAG chain and he says, okay, hey, it's, we call it Chatur Chains. Chatur was the original name of AI Verde, which is Sanskrit word for smart. Um, so what I was thinking was I'll introduce you to how to call it from Chatur Chains so that you don't have to always call it from your open AI base URL always, uh, but instead 
you can use our own um, methodology. So if you want to follow along, you can, you know, all you have to do is pip install chatur chains, chatur chains. So where, where oh, do, yeah. Where do I find a notebook? Uh, yeah, can you share? Let me see, share your screen again. Sorry. Analysis. Uh, just go to analysis and there must be, uh, if you remember, there was a data science notebook that Nira was pointing you to. Jupyter Lab data science. Yeah, if you can share, we can guide you. Can you see the the share? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Just click next, next, next. And you probably don't have a GPU, but that's okay because we are not running anything heavy GPU stuff today. Now just go to launch analysis. If you scroll back up, all the way up, go to analysis, go to analysis. Yeah, um, I mean, you can just go inside a folder in your home directory and then click on the Jupyter Notebook sign there. Just under the first tab under Notebooks. Uh, the first one, uh, Python 3, oh. there you go. Uh, click on Jake. I think it doesn't have you uh, dismiss and click on like, there it is, a double click on that. Oh yeah, permissions wise, you probably need to be inside your folder. Oh. Okay, so if you can install um, chatter chains like I had sent here, pip install. And Jake, we had talked about Jupyter Notebooks, and I know you are more of a VS Code person, but um, these are all like cousins. And this is, you can run Jupyter Notebook inside VS Code also, so the kernel. But... Yeah, I've been playing around with it. It's nice to be able to run Fairly one box of it. A chunk at a time, yeah. Yeah. So once you have it installed, so this is kind of what I call a lightweight version of Langchain. A lot of the you know functionalities of Langchain is hidden from you, which is thanks to Enrique. Um, so the way we do now is like once you have it installed, we are gonna do from chains dot llm underscore proxy import build underscore llm underscore proxy. And this is the spoiler plate stuff. So in this, I'll share this notebook anyway with you. Um, my dash will copy paste and start typing it here. So, okay. So now the only thing here is, um, okay, we need to get your keys. Uh, so, um, Enrique, can you still get, uh, API keys from his word day, he can, right? Yeah. Okay, so you might. He, he already has that. So it would be in one of his VS Code uh, examples or. And uh, do you know how to get your API key? I mean, uh, we, if, I, if you go to AI word day, uh, you should be already pasting it somewhere. But if you go to one of these, whatever you can see here and click on details, you should have a API key for, for the, let's say you can get it for the research papers, for example. Yeah, I have it in my config file too. Okay. I got an error in Storling Chatter. Can you show the screen please? Oh, sorry.
Hmm. Huh. Is there a version issue of the Ubuntu in which he is running? The Jupyter is running. Can you scroll up a little and just, just want to see what you wrote here? Uh, all the way up, please. Okay, should looks good. Um, so you're in. You're calling chatter chains, right? Can you go all the way up? Yeah, it looks good. Uh, Enrique, what might be going on here? Must be proto buff. Doesn't expect GPU, right, G Enrique? You're muted, Enrique, if you are saying something. Uh, well, can you hear him? I think I cannot hear. I him. could not hear. Your mute sign is off, Enrique, but we cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I was telling that uh, this is not really important. You can ignore it and, and move on. Oh, oh. OK. OK, cool. So in that case, what we need is, um, so I'll just paste it here. Um, so a couple of these commands which we need next is import the import OS from path lib import path. And so the first thing what I'm going to do here is um, you can probably just, so we already have one of these vector databases indexed, which is, uh, okay, so a little word on vector database, which I'm assuming Enrique covered yesterday. So vector database is basically some sort, the kind of an index which we are creating for your data. So if you had tons of data, you will contact us offline and say, hey, here is 50,000 research papers. And which is what we did for uh, these guys, right? So this is a bunch of research papers from I think Department of Agriculture or something. And uh, let's see what this works or not. So this they have this bunch of standard agriculture terms, which even we don't understand, but they just didn't want to go through all that um, and they wanted a nice chatbot to answer a lot of questions. So anyway, long story short, this was indexed here. Okay, I think this has been doing, uh, I need to talk to the dev team, which has been doing this since morning. So anyway, my point here is I, we already indexed this and we are giving us giving it as a vector DB path here, right? Um, and so my point is like, we are trying to show you how RAG works. But there are two ways of accessing RAG. One is you, either you give us all, if, if the doc data is too huge, you just give it us offline, we just index it for you. But an easy way out is what you, I think you're already doing, which is CSV, right? You can, yeah, I'm assuming you're feeding it inside a prompt and uh, from the prompt, is that how you're doing it? Like, are you calling CSV inside a prompt or are you uploading it somewhere? I'm uploading a CSV and converting it to a, a data frame, a pandas data frame. And you're, are you passing that inside your prompt? Yeah. Uh, Can I see how you're calling it, like the exact place? So it looks sort of like this. Um, let me see. Where is the... So this is my prompt. Nice. So read reading the CSV into a data frame here. And there's a column in the CSV called text. Hmm. And you're adding that to your prompt somewhere, right? And 
Uh, yeah, right here. Perfect. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, okay, this is exactly what I want to show you today. Uh, but there is, like, this is a little complicated way of doing things. Langchain itself has a little a uh, bit more this works okay there's no complaints like this will work i'm assuming are you getting good answers from the prompt and engine yep. okay and i what models are you accessing are you on your mistral right i'm um, using llama 3 this oh, one perfect uh, and do you know how to find all the list of models we have already yeah uh, i'm not sure okay so i'll just paste that here the command here so that way you're not stuck with just one model um so I'm gonna I'll paste it in our chat window. So I mean this is the perfect office hours because thankfully we don't have to like come prepared. Okay, so you can actually just look all um paste it to everyone in the meeting, paste here. And I'm gonna paste that also in the so you can use that curl command um uh, and that should you can put it inside your uh, Jupyter notebook, like um, uh, oh. the entire curl command. You can, the same notebook we are creating on, on Jupyter, you can put it inside there. Yeah, you might have to pass your own API key, but. Oh, I see. Yeah, so you, you'll have it, you should have it somewhere. Okay. Huh. Yeah, so you can see the ones that you have access to. Oh, he has access to that. So I was wondering why is he not seeing the whole thing? Okay. But, but if, if he needs more access to others, there's, we, we can make that happen. So Jake, that is the benefit that you don't have to worry about it. If you say you need Mistral, then there is Mistral or Med Lama, whatever that might be. Or if Enrique and Mithun tune a model for you, that can be stuck in there and then you just start using it. But the benefit is everybody in the lab can start using it. It's not just like one person. Yeah. So so um, Mithun, you may not know, but so there's a Harvard lab, which is like a course. And Jake and I think two of his stu students are in it. So they all have access to whatever his lab is allowed to work with. Um, and then, you know, as they do more things, they can bring in others. You have staff access, so you have many other models that uh, you have access to. Oh, I see me. Okay. So this is what um, uh, I'm just pasting it in the chat window. So we, at least this is like a small list of things we have. Okay. Once I'm beautiful. Um, maybe just look at my screen then. Um, so this when I run this command on my end, um, I'll show you what we get. So at least this is, like if you can see my screen, this is a bunch of light lesser models, but when I run the whole command, um, we have, the whole point is like Chatur and AI Verde is a big beast. So you can, pro I don't know, see this is the list keeps going, right? So this huge <laughs> set of lists and all you have to do is like the same thing you are calling instead of this name, we just put a different name, right? And you can call whatever you want. Um, so again, the indexing part is like I said, on, on one side, this I am calling this particular index. Now, I was going to show you how to do it from prompt. Like if you can see my screen, this is exactly what you're doing. But chatter change makes it much more simpler than what you are doing. Um, for example, here, so this, like the first one I was saying, llm.invoke, what is thinknet? It'll answer only from that particular research paper. So let me see if I can run that. Um, so it's indexed for that. It's, a, uh, okay, this is, <laughs> this is, this is a tricky part with uh, LLM. I think our services are down because I was getting this error there. 
So LLM, this is something, how do you make it answer only from your content and not from its global knowledge base? So this answer here, if it's not able to find from the original data we indexed, it's gonna come up with, hey, Stinknet is a satirical science fiction context. It might just be hallucination too. Now, yeah. interestingly, you know, we worked on how to fix that because the original purpose of creating AI Verde was as a teaching assistant. And we wanted it to say, I don't know if you don't know, right? And yeah. you realize you can, the way you can do it is you can actually write a prompt like you are a teaching assistant, you're having a conversation and use the information we provide within slash reference. Okay, the slash reference is provided here, kind of saying that you do. And then you say, then we say like, okay, if you don't know, right, if you can't answer it, say I can't answer this question. And you should also show us a source from which where you're adding. So this is all at this point very, very doable for the user. And that is the best part of AI these days that you can play around and find that, okay, this is, uh, yeah, so this is, uh, you don't answer out, so outside this here, are, I'll, I'll share this document with you, right? So normally this is what you're doing, like ragless prompt, which is, hey, you are a teaching assistant, you should, uh, but give me the answer, but, this is doing rag without you giving us the whole um, off, like offline. You don't have to give us the whole data set, right? Like I was showing it in the picture earlier. Like you don't have to give us this data set. If and these days um, models are long enough, they can take a huge amount of data within the context itself here, and um, you can just. This is very interesting. Like we, uh, Enrique and Nick and my team had to go through a lot of iterations to come up with a nice set of prompts. And yeah. this, as you know, is called the whole world of prompt engineering. Uh, it has come down to that. But still, if you can ask the right questions, it it will answer the right things. And that's the way you force it to say, okay, I don't know this answer to this question, right? And in fact, I was just showing these people that uh, we asked um, Verde, to, I gave it a huge set of documents about itself and said, can you create an FAQ for yourself? And it just created a whole FAQ about, you know, what is Verde and how does it work and all those things like that. So I can probably just show you that. So, and the command I used for that is, um, let me see if I can find it. So I gave it like pretty much like a CSV, but this time I gave it text from all the, like we had tons of documents on AI Verde. I just gave it inside the context here, which is where you're giving the CSV instead, right? So pretty much between this and what you have, you have a huge tool inside in your hand, right? This prompt engineering and you can put your everything here or like chatter chains will also help you do the CSV. It's a much more lightweight version. You don't have to go through so much code. Uh, and you have access to all these models. So I think this is the best part we wanted to highlight to researchers that we have opened up an entire huge gamut of uh, these huge set of models. Now its power is in your hand. It's completely dependent on how you ask the question, play around with it, ask the right questions. You should be able to, like you can Google on prompt engineering. Um, you should be able to slowly make it do what you want it to do, right? Um, so this is my introduction, which I had planned for today. Um, and I wanted to like, since Jake is good at like going through the course, analytical skills are pretty good. Um, do you guys think we can open up the code, chatter code for him? Because he can just look at these stuff and say, oh, hey, this is how you done the, run this. Um, and what do you think, Andrew? It is it is there. Like you you can read it. Does he have read access? Is that I, what I don't think it's private. It is private. Is it? Yeah. I can just Whoa. paste. It. Yeah. So okay. let me let me paste that here. Um in the chat window though. So usually this uh you can one very nice place to start is 
chatter chains and can you click on that link? I don't think you should have access, but I'm going to get you access after this class. Um, so we have a bunch of notebooks created, including this demo here, which you can see on my screen. Well, thank you, Chrome. Uh, okay, so you have all these demos and where you can, this is essentially what I was showing you today. Like, hey, we, this is if you have indexed it with us already. If not, we have methodologies of, hey, here is a, how do you call a rag? You have rag less prompt, rag prompt. And with your kind of skills, once I open this for you, I'm sure you can just, you'll trace it backwards and find all possible ways to do it. Um, and so tell me this, your data, is it always in a CSV format? The stuff I'm working with right now is, yeah, it's short text data from multiple human human subjects. So, so I'm sort of coding all of these individual fairly short pieces of text. So it's it's in a CSV just because each of the human subjects has has an ID number. Um, but but certainly like I'm thinking of how I could use this for classes in particular, like if I've got, I'm teaching a big graduate seminar in the spring and I have a big database of articles and building a, a, a RAG model or some sort of chat bot where they could ask questions of all of those articles would be would be super cool. Yeah, that's what my next week's class was planned for. So, or maybe a week or two from now. So here soon you'll realize there's only so much you can pass in the context because depending on how, how much the AI model is willing to accept, but which is where we walk into the whole world of indexing. Now yeah. indexing, the easy part is used give us offline, but I don't want people to depend on us. So which is why we, I was gonna teach you how to do uh, this, which is the dense passage retrieval, where you yourself can create a vector DB on, on your end. And we'll try to do that on Cyverse because Cyver, like if I try, I mean, I'm sure Enrique has done this on HPC. Uh, it'll give you nightmares if you have worked with, if you have not worked with command line before. But Cyverse, if I'll show you how to create this locally on your or vector database so that you have all your tons of document, index it yourself. And now instead of um, this, instead of you calling slash research paper. I don't know if you can hear me. I. Um, you froze for a second there. I think we lost you. Yeah. Yes. Jake, Jake sure is frozen for me. Okay. Yeah. Same so, here. Okay, I think we lost him. But yeah. Um, uh, so, well, he's way ahead of anybody I've seen before. He's clicked up, learned it all by himself. Yeah, he and uh, Jake and Joe Bonito. So Joe is like the heart and soul of their t uh, department. And then these are all Joe's collaborators who he has helped bring together. So yeah, it's, it's an amazing, yeah, amazing no. team. <clears throat> amazing team, amazing team. Just you just we just showed him like the little tip of the iceberg and he's gone and figured out everything himself. <laughs> okay, we'll give it a couple more seconds and if he's not coming back, we'll call it a day. Uh, and I ask Edwin, uh, there might be some issue that uh, I'm wondering if Vignesh's students have jumped onto it and have done something, but let's see. Yeah, I think the services are also down today because it wasn't responding to me since morning, uh, at least not from our front end. Back end seems fine. Uh, so you're able to reach it on the command line? Correct. Or on the API? Yes. But this one is giving me uh, this, uh, the front end. I'm wondering why. Uh, API, yes, it replies back. Or maybe, hold on. Earlier today morning, it was giving me the right answer for StinkNet because StinkNet is, I know, is a part of that research index paper we had indexed. But then, interestingly, um, when I ask again, it, it hallucinates and maybe it's even like reading from its own um, basic knowledge set. Right now, yes. have you tried it's answering it? Yeah, so it's malware. It's it doesn't. It's not answering from the index data set. So, 
This is very interesting, by the way. How do we make it answer only from... Oh, but like, sure, I'm not prompting it while our actual rack system is prompting it explicitly. Like, say, I don't know if you don't. Yeah. I think you might be calling it directly to the Correct. LLM model, not the rack Correct. pipeline. Correct. So if I was giving that, um, let's see. Yeah. Even before it was giving me right answer, but I suspecting something in between is missing. Uh, we'll see this. Oops, okay. So even here, what is net? Let's look at what happened there. Enrique, are you also getting this issue like on chat.cybers.ai? Yeah, I'm getting the error myself, the same error so, you saw. Edwin is also posting something on Slack, so I think that something is going on. Okay, no issues. All right, so let's call it a day because I think Jake's internet somehow died. Uh, but maybe next week I'll show, like you, next week Enrique is doing another topic and after that I'll show them how to directly upload like create a vector database and call from like a dense passage retrieval locally. Um, yeah, it's actually huge. I wonder if we can make it more famous and people knowing this. It's so such a useful tool for researchers and like we have exactly one person using it. Yeah, but um, uh, what we can also do, Mithun, is put the notebooks in a common area. Like you can have them put the notebook in Git and then just Git clone it. Uh, and then work on the notebooks. Um, so that way it's easier for them. That's sort of how we do most of our tutorials. Yeah, we have it, right? Like uh, most yeah. of it, it's up there, all the all the stuff which is in notebooks, basically. Yeah, so if you want to just put the, uh, yeah, put the notebook there, let them yeah. pull it from there. Perfect. Oh, so you already have it there. Yeah, yeah, we already have uploaded all this for every sessions and all. Uh, notebooks are there. I'm just saying he's the only one who seems to be using it, which is sad because people should know how powerful this is. Between Cybers and Verde, this is a huge, powerful combination which researchers can really use on campus. Yeah, but I think this semester we were trying to keep it low key. So Fair. next semester we take it out. We we had to figure out our own like Space. what how. Yeah, so the AI makerspace has not been like advertised heavily. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So other than that, I think we're all good. Um, all right. Let's call it a day. Uh, anything else you guys want to talk about? No. Uh, well, I'll see you guys for the writing session on Monday. So we'll yeah, and then reach that. after that we'll open it up to people. Fair. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, Bye, guys. Oh, yes. Okay. You're saying something. Take care. Yes, I'll stop recording here.